Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Whether it's for a headache or body aches or back pain, you've probably found yourself popping a few pills. I mean, we're talking, of course, about over-the-counter pain medications. And there are a lot of options. There's ibuprofen, brand name Advil or Motrin. There's acetaminophen or Tylenol. And there's plain old aspirin. Do people still take that? Of course, I do. Oh, okay. These medications can be highly effective for managing pain, but they are not without side effects. And how do you know how much to take and which kind? Here to help us sort things out. Here to help us sort things out is Mayo Clinic Family Medicine, Dr. Summer Allen. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Allen. It's great to see you. Thank you very much for having me. Great to see you both. So over-the-counter pain medications, I think it's a multi-billion dollar business, uh, and there are several different companies that sell several, several different kinds. How do you choose? Trial and error? Great question. I think for many patients, a lot of times it is. They've found one that worked well for them previously. Currently, I think also it depends on what's on sale, what's generic, and what's available. <laughs> But like the, the generics bottle. are equivalent. <laughs> I mean, the generics are fine. They are. I, I often tell patients what, so I s- tell them acetaminophen or the ibuprofen, and then to look for that name, and if there's Walmart brand, Target brand is more effective for them, that's fine. They don't need the brand name Tylenol or brand name Motrin. What about aspirin? Is Dr. Shives alone in taking aspirin? <laughs> He's not alone. I think. <laughs> I think it may be a little bit cultural at times and probably generation wise for how many use aspirin still as their primary kind of pain reliever or even trying to utilize it as a fever reducer. I'd say for many, what I see often is aspirin has been started for the cardio protection or heart benefit. And that's why many take that baby aspirin or the 81 milligram dose of aspirin. And most often more people for pain and fever reduction are looking at the acetaminophen or ibuprofen. What is the strongest over-the-counter pain medication out there? I think it depends on the person. And as I I thought about us talking about this topic is our mindset often is that more is better or that the highest dose is the best. And that's where the side effects come into play for patients. And back to your first question of often for them, it's what's worked well in the past would be the best thing. And when we talk about ibuprofen and the risk potentially for poor or uh, adverse cardiovascular events, so like a heart attack or stroke or heart failure that could occur, what's been recommended is that naproxen, which is actually what's often found in Aleve for patients, would be the safer option. So trying to educate patients sometimes, it depends on what they're having to use a medication for and for how long. But one of the best, I think, a lot of times for patients over the counter that I see it most often used is usually a leave. Hmm. Is there, I mean, none of us are genetics experts here, but is that the pharmacogenomics piece of it that for some that's why people say I like ibuprofen better or I like acetaminophen better? Is it because it's just what works for our particular genome better? I do. I think for for some patients, it, it's how their body has responded to it. Some of that gets into their genetics. I think also some of it gets into a mindset okay. as well uh, for them. All right. So let's talk about uh, each individual. What is ibuprofen best for? Great question. So ibuprofen inflammation is one of the great things that it can help with and swelling for example, for arthritis or joint pain for patients. It can reduce fever as well, but that's one of the main reasons that people are utilizing it. And acetaminophen? What would you, would you say in general that that's a better medication for people with arthritis than acetaminophen? Yes. And it's because of the anti-inflammatory effect. Mm-hmm. And the acetaminophen is a pain reliever but doesn't have any anti-inflammatory. Exactly. So it's better for what? Fever? Fever. Okay. Uh, minor aches and pains, it can work great as well. Um, young children, acetaminophen will work great if they've got a fever. And I have to remind parents that fever is there because our body's trying to fight something. They're, in general, children are, are going to do okay. They're not going to be harmed by the fever. Their body's responding, but sometimes they don't feel the greatest. So by giving them the acetaminophen, it can help reduce that and make them more comfortable. And is there a situation where aspirin is best? In the cardio protection benefits, okay. so if you're looking to do it to protect your heart, that would be where aspirin, and for many people, the 81 milligram dose is going to be sufficient. Now, 
Dr. Shives, because I work with a microphone and my husband does not, I get to ask this question and see if I'm right or if he's right. Are you ready, Dr. Allen? Yes. Because when it comes to either ibuprofen or acetaminophen, for one of them, you take just one pill, and for the other one, you take two. And my husband thinks, oh, I just take two of each. And I'm like, that's not the dose. Why, first of all, why, I don't know, why would they do that? I have no idea. But what is the damage of taking too much of some of this medication? And am I, I'm right, right? <laughs> well, I think your husband is right. I didn't exactly <laughs> understand the question, but I think your husband he is right. He thinks it's not a big deal <laughs> to take two of something that you're supposed to take one of. And that's back to the more is better type yeah. of idea. And, and really for many people, the goal would be to find the lowest dose that's effective for you. So for some patients, one pill is going to be sufficient. And important and probably what's most helpful because it's hard for people when they go home to remember what they were told at the doctor's office or remember what they were told months ago or even a few hours ago is to follow what's written on the prescription bottles or on the over-the-counter bottles because those directions are there for a reason and they generally also have their, your maximum daily dose. See, following directions. Well, <laughs> I think you bring up an extremely important point. It is extremely important to look at the label and read the directions. Uh, 30 or 40 percent of people in this country admit to the fact that they have taken more medication than is recommended on the bottle, like your husband. Um, and it might be over the counter, but that doesn't mean it can't be dangerous. Oh, Exa exactly. exactly. I mean, there's a certain amount that you maximum dose that you can take in a 24 hour period. And you really need to adhere to that, because if you don't, what can happen? Talk to us about the complications of these med medications. Exactly. So take acetaminophen, for example. That maximum daily dose, it has to do with that medication itself, but also with potentially other things that you may be consuming or taking. Uh, antibiotic, for example, or for some patients, if they enjoy having a beer at night or a glass of wine, those who use alcohol, the way that alcohol is processed through our body is similar to how acetaminophen is, and it can lead to liver toxicity for people or liver damage for them. And so that's why we caution people to really be careful about taking other things while they're taking certain medications. Ibuprofen, for example, taking more than is recommended can lead to a irritation in someone's stomach lining or a bleed in their stomach lining. It can also lead to damage to their kidneys. All right, so you tell your husband one pill but two beers. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's and okay. While I'm at it, and if I'm queen and I get to say, we need to make that writing on the bottle bigger, but that's a different problem for a different guest. <laughs> yeah. Over-the-counter pain medications with Dr. Summer Allen. Where we've learned everything you need to know, pretty much, and we've learned that you ought to stick to the, to the right dosage, and there are certain of these medications that are better than others for certain problems. Dr. Summer Allen, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.